G'day everyone, Matt Elder of Family Bricks, and in today's video, we're going to review this Lego Aura Re of the Sun, Moon and Earth by Jason Alleman. Instructions for this are freely available from JK Brickworks. We'll cover some of the gearing, key parts and slight modifications we've had to make to get it working from the limited parts we have in our collection. This was done for one of our kids' school projects and was a huge hit. This is a Family Bricks video. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and if you want to be super awesome, subscribe. Click the bell and select all to be notified of new videos as they're uploaded. I've been looking at uh, Jason's stuff for quite a while and he does some really cool mechanical models. Um, now the Ori is just a mechanical representation of the solar system. So in this case, sun, earth, and moon. Overall, the actual set itself, it's pretty impressive for what it is. If you are going to build it, the one thing I would say though is the way that the sun and the earth connect onto here is a little bit on the flimsy side. I know the first time the kids picked it up, they both fell off and smashed. Um, so it would be nice if they could have just come up with a better design, whether it's using something like more like this to hook into it. But for something where you, it's provided free and you can download the instructions, you know, that, that, that's great. I'm not going to complain about that. The motor itself obviously will allow it to go in both directions and off the top of my head I can't tell you which would be the correct one realistic to life and which wouldn't be but we'll just turn it on so you can sort of see. So it spins through. <clears throat> now that it's spun through you can see this little tiny gear here is the one which is then turning the main arm as it goes around. See, you can see it in action as the arm is just going to come over the top of the motor unit there. Still got plenty of clearance. It makes it nice and neat and compact in there. And we'll just stop it there. The earth then does make a, a pretty good approximate. You can see it there. Uh, you got sort of Africa, Asia coming across to here. Kind of a little bit of Australia, it's a little bit off-centered there, but that's okay. Then you've got North America, South America, Atlantic, and then coming back across the ocean to Europe and that. And the ice caps at both sides, and a little bit there for, I'm guessing, Greenland. So that's pretty cool in that regard. The other great thing about this model is that the rotations relative to one another are actually pretty accurate. Obviously the size and the spacing is of the sun to the earth isn't quite right, but what you'll find is for every 28 rotations of the earth, the moon will go around once. And then for every 365 rotations of the earth, it will actually go around the sun uh, one time. It's actually 270 given the gear set up, but um, you know, without making without it being too complicated it's pretty good and then the sun too as well it rotates about the equivalent of once every 25 days but the sun itself has different rotations because it's not a solid object depending upon your latitude and longitude but yeah you know, for the approximation's sake if you are following the instructions through then rather than having this whole gear motor set up you'll actually get one of these little cranks here and the way that's been designed is for every one turn it will turn the earth once so it'll be like a day. The other thing I will say with the instructions, having made instructions myself, Lego make it look so easy, but the ones in that's been included that you can download as PDF for free are actually pretty good. The main thing I would suggest though is if you are building it is to pull out all the pieces first for each step because then you know what you're looking for in each step. It's Some of them, there's one or two steps, it's not 100% obvious, but if you've got the pieces there and you're looking at the diagrams, you can work out roughly what needs to go where. In terms of gearing, You've actually got four things rotating here. So the way that starts off, obviously, at the motor here, it powers in, and then it comes into here and comes across to there. And the first one, which drops down and comes across and comes up, that will spin the sun. Then there's this other gear which comes off that, which then enables the actual rest of the earth and the moon to rotate, which comes along here and it splits there. So you get one which rotates the earth and then the other one which comes up and rotates the moon. And then the actual one which rotates the whole arm is a little bit more complicated or just long, lengthy, comes in, up, down, up, around here. There's a whole bunch of gears which go to there and then it comes down to this one back up and then up to this little tiny one which then turns the big one here. The other thing I would say about this is it does use a lot of different gears and pretty much all the different sizes. So you've got right from the very tiny small ones, you know, larger ones to 
uh, medium size, the larger ones, and then even two of these bigger disc type ones. You got the really big one there, and then uh, the equivalent of like a three by three there. So if you are just rebricking this, just make sure you got the gears. But I would say the main thing is to make sure you have the right ones of these. If you do end up using one of these, you've got to lift the whole thing up another layer, which means moving a whole bunch of Technic pins in there and making them longer. Not the end of the world, but if you do have the correct right size one of these, which is like one length smaller, it's just going to make your life so much easier. Uh, I've also made some modifications. In this case here, the motor, I've set that up the way that I'd like it to be. And then others have been just cosmetic and things because the way that he did it had uh, full complete parts and everything like that. And I've had to make modifications based upon the parts which I've got. First thing I've done is put this motor section onto it because we want to be able to have it so the kids can take it into school. And so it needs a, a solid base and everything for that. So all I've really done here is just taken some of these two by two red pegs in the top place them around some of these panel pieces there so it's a panel there which then connects to another same size panel there just using the um, pins so you've got three of those there all connected by four of these red pins there and then you've got the square box frames I think they're five by sevens um, again one there one there pins to the motor in here this is I think is an X extra large motor and then just a uh, a beam, what's that, a, a seven across the bottom there, just so it sits and connects all together. And then, yeah, the battery just can sit in there, mainly so that you can just keep it easy. And then also, too, you can just put the power cable under there so when it spins around, it doesn't get caught up in it. A few of the other modifications made because we don't have the parts in the model in the instructions, which are available for free, which is great. We've got some curved circular pieces here. The main thing is is that within that you've got holes for pins to go in so rather than do that just use one of these two by two bricks with the hole in the top because the axle from these supports here will actually go into it so by doing that you can replace that there and it all works pretty good the other thing we've had to do is in here there's what I believe is called a Lego gear system or well, the piece that he has in his instructions I don't actually have I've got one which is the same thing but it's like one unit higher um, so that's what I put in there the, the issue with that though is that when it makes it one unit higher it pushes all this stuff up higher so then you've had to extend the main axle pin which goes all the way through and then there's a couple other there's a, another main axle it's, it's under there which drives the main gear now the issue with extending it like that because you put everything up had to then build out another base because this larger wheel here which sits there if it doesn't have the base it angles at different points and sometimes the main gear which turns it won't turn it so you got to just make sure that that's they're flat and solidly supported the sun uses a lot of one one by threes and two by three plates which are relatively not as common, so we've kind of run out and then had to substitute closer colors. And then the earth, again, same sort of thing, haven't had the exact colors, but tried to sort of keep it, and it does it pretty good at approximating it. Overall, it was great to put together, and if this is your thing, and or the kids have a science project in the ballpark, definitely recommend giving it a go. It really helps kids to visualize and understand different orbits and what rotates around what. Also helps the kids to learn key rotation times, like the Earth going around the Sun in 365 and a quarter days. Of course, anything in LEGO seems far more engaging and tactile, so it really hits the mark as a learning objective. Instructions are pretty spot on if you get out the right pieces for each step as you go. While the hand crank is fun in the first couple of turns, you really do need some sort of motor setup to get full value and appreciation out of it. Really recommend making sure you have all the main gears as modifying it on the fly can get very tricky depending upon what you are missing. It was great to put together and really enjoyed it. Having quality instructions like the ones provided really makes a difference. Jason has a huge variety of moving slash kinetic instruction models on his website. Some free, some you need to pay a token amount for. There are a number of his I would like to build in the future. Maybe the actual working safe. What catches your eye? What should we build next? Let us know in the comments below.
This is a Family Bricks video. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and if you want to be super awesome, subscribe. Click the bell and select all to be notified of new videos as they're uploaded. That's all from us here at Family Bricks. If you're wondering if I've ever made my own moving slash kinetic works, be sure to check out my Lego scenario standard, such as this Star Wars one. Otherwise, here are some other videos you might be interested in. Until next time, when we talk about all things Lego and lifestyle.